All right, it's another morning here on the farm. I'm gonna go through and get all my parts organized, um, get my thermostat housings cleaned. Um, I'm gonna redo my tool loadout, so I'm gonna go back through and take out all the tools that I know I didn't use yesterday or I didn't need, you know, lighten her up a little bit. And then we're going to be um, going in, I gotta extract all those exhaust manifold studs out. And then we got to possibly retap the threads just depending on how hard they come out. But uh, they, there's a special tap for that as well. Um, but then I'll go in, restall all these studs, clean up the exhaust manifold, install the exhaust manifold, and then just assemble everything back in reverse order with new gaskets, seals, O-rings, clamps, you know, you name it. So let's get into it. This is going to be the current loadout for the day. So that's the stuff that I know I didn't use yesterday or I don't need going back together. So we're not going to need the trim sticks and the picks and I didn't use any of this stuff yesterday. So I didn't lighten her up too much, but uh, yeah, so I got all the gaskets off and I double nutted these studs tighten it let's see if they'll turn oh boy okay that one don't want to turn that one's coming right out okay so the ones that don't want to come out we're going to apply heat to and then we're just going to work each one of these out get the ports all cleaned up get this area all cleaned up install these studs and we'll be ready to put the exhaust manifold on Got all the studs out. Wasn't too bad. Had to heat a few of them to get them to finally crack free, but it came out. So now I'm just going to get this head all cleaned up. And uh, I think I'm going to have to tap that hole. I might just hit them all and uh, yeah, install the studs. studs are torqued, exhaust manifold gaskets are on, um, I got new o-rings on all the coolant bypass hoses, I did forget you got to put this together and set it down in here and then put these two studs in because once these two, two studs are in you can't get it in there, 
So did that. You torque the studs to 221 inch pounds. Um, these studs have a 12.7 millimeter head on them. So I use a an ADV Matco seven point impact socket, three H drive for those. Torque them down. Now I'm getting ready to set the exhaust manifold on here. But the exhaust manifold the thermostat housing and these coolant bypass tubes kind of all goes together at the same time and you will fight it every time but you just gotta work at it kind of set it on the studs for now. Now we got to try to work that thermostat housing, get the gasket on. And also you can't forget about this skinny pipe that goes from this side of the head. I did change the ring over here and then this goes to the side of the thermostat housing, but it's kind of got to snake into here too eventually. Those are eight millimeter Allen cap screws. Okay, they're started. I got a couple snug at the top. Well, now we gotta try to get this bypass tube in here. One in. Tighten this one down. Okay. Now I gotta get the I gotta get this other one in. Alright, got that other one slid in. Man, with new O-rings, those things are hard to get in there. Get started. 15 millimeter bolts holding these in. Of course, you gotta put this front one in first and put the bolt in, cause then the tube for this one goes over the bolt. It's not being nice. Now we can snug down the Allen bolts in the thermostat housing. 37 foot pounds. Yep. And yes, you have to use a long eight millimeter, mainly to get through this hole here. Okay, now we're gonna install all the spacers on there. I don't know if I said this or not, but you can't get the shorter studs anymore. If you got shorter studs, you have to replace them with these longer studs. That's what you get now. Um, they went to a longer stud design, so you can put more clamping force on the exhaust manifold. So the longer the bolt is, the more stretch you have on the bolt, which equals more clamping force. So anytime you see a bolt with a spacer on it, you're like, why is that bolt so long with a spacer? That's why, extra clamping force, bolt stretchage. I'm just gonna work this one on. And these nuts are one-time use only. They are coated, um, no anti-seize required. Oh, need a dollar up a little bit. Just holding it in place for now. So I can get all my 
spacers and nuts on. So I have had less problems with these longer studs. Um, they do a better job and they don't seem to break like the shorter studs do. So now I'm just gonna give all these a little snug snug. Okay. <clears throat> Swivel sockets for the wind again. So we are going to torque this in a sequence um, torque pattern and then we're going to torque all the nuts initially to 18 foot pounds and then we're going to go back through and turn them 90 degrees and I'm going to use a snap on tech angle for that. We'll set it to 18 and then we'll switch it to 90 degrees and then we'll turn all the, the nuts 90 degrees. So the sequence goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, they're all torqued to 18 foot pounds. Um, I run through it twice um, because I wanna make sure they all stay at 18. You'll notice when you go back through the second time, you gotta tighten some of them some more to 18. So I wanna make sure they're all staying at 18. And then we got the tech angle set up at 90 degrees. <clears throat> so I'll show you one and then we'll blaze through it. This is gonna measure degrees when it's sensing torque on the head, so. Here we go. And then you can ratchet it. This is the secret behind the tech angle. Boom. Tells you how many foot pounds it really is. Within two degrees. So we're gonna do that 12 times. New thermostats, new thermostat cover, new gasket. I'll try to get this bad boy down into place. Thermostat housing cover is it installed. Bolts are torqued, 63 foot pounds. Now we got to put the pipe in between here, clean these holes up. And then we can get the upper radiator hose on, the bracket that goes on this side, tie the wiring in. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and put the EGR cooler in. Okay, it's EGR cooler time. Get off there. You wanna make sure you clean that mounting surface that it mounts on. Make sure it's clean. started in that coolant pipe back there like that and then I'll get this clamp on there get the outlet pipe the coolant pipe on I put new o-rings on the oil lines down here fittings all right change of plans I'm gonna go ahead and throw this turbo on and then I can do a lot more work all at once when I'm, you know, down in the hole. There. Get in your hole and... Huh. 
Okay. Some new nuts on here. Got a new gasket. Get a torque wrench on this one. Beep. Torqued. Make them feel all the same. Yep, feel about the same. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff to do now that we got the, the turbo sitting on there. Um, of course, we're going to have to put new gaskets and clamps, stuff here. Um, gonna replace this turbo linkage for the actuator because it's about ready to come off this little ball joint here so i'll put a new one of those on i'm um, gonna clean up this hole get the oil lines in the coolant lines in put new o-rings on that clean the bottom of the oil drain get the oil drain for the turbo in gotta get this clamp on for the cooler got a new ceiling ring in there um, got to get new gaskets for the EGR pipe, outlet pipe here, and then we'll get straps, new straps put on here, and then we got to put the, the coolant pipe on there, and then we got to get the upper radiator hose on, we got to get the charge air um, pipe in place with new gaskets and clamps, and then I can get the... Uh, big air intake pipe in here the after treatment air pipe in here and then we can start shielding this thing up and yeah getting it ready to run fill up with coolant and then we should be wrapping it up today
Okay, it is all complete except for a few things. I can't find the O-rings for these coolant lines or this oil supply line that goes into the turbo. Must not have ordered them. So can't fill it up with coolant yet. Can't run it. So um, tomorrow I'll come back. I'll bring those O-rings. But I got this new fuel line on. And at first I didn't think it was the right one because this from here to there is different. It actually brings this pipe out around this bolt a little better for the EGR cooler strap, but it did fit in there, but it was kind of a bugger with all these clamps, clamp on the back of the head. This line goes back around, attaches back in there. It's a return line, but yeah, basically had to have all these lines loose to get everything apart, but got that done. Um, everything is put back together, operator hose, all the wiring, all the turbo pipes and everything. The only thing I'm lacking is those O-rings and then of course I'll fill it up with coolant and then I like to put the air, I'm gonna put the air pipe on and have the, the air cleaner sitting here. Um, and then I like to run it for a little bit make sure we don't have any leaks or anything um, before I put all the shields back on. Cause once you put the shield back on, if you got a leak somewhere, it's a pain in the butt to get to. So I like to run it before I put all those shields on, but I uh, hope you got, you guys and enjoyed the time lapse of the engine going back together. And I guess we'll continue this tomorrow. Okay. So I got the O-rings in this morning and Got the, for the coolant actuator and I yesterday I did replace this linkage between the actuator and the, the turbo here because this was about ready to come off so um, got a new linkage there and got a no ring on the oil supply line coming in um, went ahead and put the, the air intake pipe in and kind of just mounted the air cleaner here because um, I'm gonna run it just like this um, with just air cleaner, I'm not going to put the, the pre-cleaner and everything on. Um, I'm going to fill it up with coolant and I brought a sump pump that I'm going to put in my coolant barrel down there. Pump the coolant back up into here because the coolant's like a year old. It's still good. It's nice and clean in that barrel down there. So we're going to pump it back in. Um, Deer says that that coolant lasts six years or 6,000 hours. So, you know, and it's like... 18 gallons so you're talking quite a bit of money there in coolant so we're gonna get our money's worth out of it and reuse it and yeah i got um, got these lines done got the clamp on there got the electrical kind of tidied up there oh i gotta plug in the two connectors right there that's been on so we can actually run so get those plugged in get it filled up with coolant and then we're going to hear this beast run. All right, show time. Coolant level is full and I'm going to key it on, prime the fuel system, and then I'm going to start it up, let it run, check for leaks. Probably going to see some smoking around the exhaust manifold and you know, that's just that penetrant oil burning off or whatever. So, but main thing we're looking for fuel leaks, coolant leaks, oil leaks, you know, so watch that.
All that deep creeps burning off. It's got a lovely smell though. <sighs> Love that smell in the morning. Yeah, no leak. Just smoking, which I figured. Cool. Now it's time to shield this thing all up. Yeah, great. All right, now that I got it all hot and smoky in here, I'm gonna put all the shields back on. Voila, and it's done. The engine's gone, poof, you don't see it no more. Oh, that is a lot of shields and bolts to go back in, but I don't have any bolts left over, so that's good. All right, it's tool time. So we are going to cover um, what's inside of the truck bed, and then we're gonna go around to the right side and show you guys what's in there. Um, to answer some common questions I got on the first one, yes, these are all my tools. I bought all of them. Um, Sloan owns the truck. I own all the tools on the truck. Um, truck weighs around 19,000 pounds now. Um, it is a gasser, 6.2 liter, um, but it gets 10 mile a gallon when it was empty. 10 mile a gallon fully loaded, um, but it has plenty of power. I can run, you know, interstate speed, no problem, pass cars, don't have any power concerns. It's just thirsty a little bit, but uh, let's get into the back of my truck. All right, so we got a manual hose reel. I don't like the retractable ones. I like it old school, Flexzilla hose wrapped up there. Um, that is hooked up to a John Deere compressorator and that thing is mean I run it about 175 psi um, the generator comes in handy when I need to run a battery charger or um, even a a 110 wire welder and stuff like that um, a lot of guys said well I don't see any welder on the truck well we have a portable welder that I can take with me if I need to do some minor welding jobs out in the field um, here we got a Flexzilla uh, extension cord reel, gas can to feed this hungry beast. This thing will suck the fuel down. So here's something new. We got Milwaukee pack out set right here. Um, I bought the mounting plate and then bolted it down to the bed and then snapped everything together. And that thing does not move. I also keep a bunch of hoses for draining coolant hydraulic oil um, underneath the compressor there and then you know got some I got extra coolant and high guard and refrigerant and all kinds of stuff in here but let's look let's let's look into this all right so here we have the Milwaukee fuel m18 pack out vacuum um, I don't leave the hose on it because it blows off well this end will blow off and then it flaps in the wind so i don't want to lose it so i just take it off of there so to release it it's going to pull it off set it aside this first little pack out is kind of like shop supplies <clears throat> so we got extra burr bits and razor blades and flap wheels and got some cutting discs and electrical tape and emery cloth and more razor blades and i need to stock that back up my little gasket wheels there sanding discs anyway that's where i keep a lot of my shop supplies in there Where's your oh, there we go all right so the second one kind of some more shop supplies that's where i keep all my grinding discs Cutting wheels. I'm dropping stuff. All right, the big toolbox. Okay, in here we got a the M12 rotary tool. So I got a whole rotary tool kit set from Harbor Freight. Works pretty decent. It's more diamond bits. 
here's the the rotary tool this thing is a mean little sucker i tell you what it will rip um, see how this bit right here is mean so it'll actually drill in and you can wall it around like a burr bit and i use this for you know completely drilling out bolts to where there's hardly anything left and then tap out the hole but this is a rescue bit cut off amazon and it is meant for drilling out screw extractors, easy outs, broken bolts, taps, drill bits. So, I mean, it's harder than woodpecker lips. Um, I spent it about 25,000, 30,000 RPM, and it will eat. So, the main reason I got the rotary tool is for drilling out bolts and, you know, broke off extractors, stuff like that. Okay, what do we got next? Oh. Maybe I had it mixed up. This is my four scope. I thought the four scope was behind the seat. Yep, Milwaukee bore scope. Use that thing a lot. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's where that battery went. It's gonna be dipped. There, I found it. It was behind the seat. It's supposed to be in here. Here we have the m12 soldering iron this thing's pretty awesome you can swivel this head where you want it and i foamed it out keep it in place real good and hold my other accessories and solder but i put a battery right here if you want to okay down on the bottom of course we got the the grinder use this a lot mainly keep a cutting wheel on it for cutting shafts and bearings stuff like that um, Milwaukee grease gun of course and we have the M18 searchlight this thing will put some serious light on the situation so that's where I keep a lot of my extra Milwaukee stuff there, that's what it's supposed to look like when it's all filled. All right, continuing on. Extra high guard, empty bucket for draining stuff. We got our two pigs R34, extra coolant, jug of diesel fuel. Um, that's my coolant barrel that I keep on hand in case I need to drain coolant down or I can even drain hydraulic oil in there. I don't really like to, I like to keep it just coolant. Um, we got a uh, several ladders in here, two foot step ladder, four foot step ladder. That's an extendable, goes up to uh, 14 feet, I believe. Got blocks in here. Oh, this is a, a gear wrench creeper. And then a bunch of different blocks, cribbing. You never know what you're gonna need. Torches, oxyacetylene. So here I got a bunch of rigid pack outs set up. So you got the big toolbox at the bottom and then everything snaps on the top. This is combine hardware, nothing but uh, like swing arm bolts and stuff for the cleaning shoe, all brand new in there ready to rock. This is extra parts. This is my oh crap box number three. So in here, Got a brand new set of cobalt Milwaukee bits. Um, this kit here, we have some reversible counter sinks. Some extra drill bits. I keep these on hand because I can put these in a, um, a long extension and get down deep in a hole to drill a bolt out. So, like those. And this is just a bunch of extra taps. These are files, you know, drill bit extensions, extra long drill bits, um, extra taps, extra tap handle. This is uh, for chasing threads, like on a, a large shaft you don't have a die for. That works good. This is all MPT pipe taps, all the sizes in there. Um, some more taps, some more tabs. Kind of some specialty taps in there. 
some extractors, spiral fluted taps, you know, kind of got a variety of stuff in there. So this box is mainly all like extra gaskets, O-rings, seals, some clamps, uh, special bolts um, for like exhausts and stuff. All in there, there's all kinds of stuff in there. And these, you got extra Loctite combine sealant, and then a bunch of extra long zip ties and extra brake clean and grease and multi-purpose loop, penetrant oil, brake oil, keep all that in there. And then that second box um, is a bunch of extra large bolts I keep on hand. And then the toolbox down there, I keep a bunch of extra um, like tools I use to press stuff with. And there's all kinds of random stuff in there. There's a moving blanket, there's extra R34 gauges, um, all kinds of stuff in there. I'm not gonna dig that out right now, but, and then in this lower one, try not to trip and fall on my truck here. And that lower one is all electrical. So we got terminal kits, RWAs, um, extra wire, uh, testing kits, all kinds of stuff in there. All right, right side of the truck. Keep a bunch of extra pig mat and um, little drain barrel funnels, uh, and I see this is a just like a husky tray that I put all my Loctites and sealants and you know all the chemical kind of stuff goes in this little cabinet here. It's a bit of a mess right now. All right. All right, right side of the truck. First big compartment. We have all my Milwaukee stuff, pry bars, lights, and hammers, punches. Well, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Here we got uh, this tripod, YouTubing. Um, got two Milwaukee Rover lights, a snap-on light, um, three other snap-on lights, another Milwaukee Rover light. Got this M12 Rover light, really bright lighting it up in here so down here everything's foamed in uh, snap on and wilton hammers um, there's a 10 pound and a, a two pound there's a 10 pound one in there with a 36 inch handle um, under here we got some brass punches some uh Got some welding gloves back there, some more hammers, um, some big shafts that I use for big punches, bunch of alignment punches there. See, we've got this big Matco pry bar that I don't have room for to foam it in, so it just kind of hangs out on top of there, but uh, and here we got some snap-on pry bars, except for the orange one. That's a Cornwell one. I really like it, and I've had it forever, so I've um, got the long green snap-on bar, the red. So this is three-quarter shank, five-eighth shank, um, and then this is an extra thick 30-inch, which I really use a lot. Um, some smaller ones in there, and then we got a full set of gear wrench indexing pry bars foamed in back there. And here, I, this is a new tool. It's not very old. We got these Milwaukee High Torque three quarter with one key. Um, use this for you know taking wheel bolts and stuff out with. It's a beast. Really like that so far. Up here. We've got most of my Milwaukee tools. So 
half inch high torque, some extra M12 batteries. That's a Gen 2 mid torque, a 3 8 M18 impact. The good old stubby is back there with a new 5.0. Got a new 5.0 here. Another battery. This is the fuel ratchet, regular one, M18 drill, M12 hammer drill, M12 um, quarter inch driver, the handle for the big drill, um, got another 2.5 high output. Here we got a new tool. This I just got yesterday. This is the new extended 3 8 high speed. 450 RPM, 35 foot pounds. So when it comes to ratchets, I prefer more speed over power. You can see the, here's a, the regular extended ratchet. That one I think is 55, 60 foot pounds, something like that. And then you've got the, the 90 degree impact that I use all the time. This thing is a lifesaver. It is a beast. I took a lug nut off a of skid steer with that thing. So here, you can see the, the differences between the two. A lot smaller head on it. So we are thinner here too. So, I haven't really compared them yet, but yeah, really like the quarter inch high speed, so 3 8 extended is just the next best thing. So, I got the foam cut in section, so, you know, when I buy more tools, I can take out the section, just the shorter sections, and then uh, redo it, basically. So, not sure how I'm going to get that worked in there, but I will. So, this is new. I haven't tested it yet more testing to come on that guy so we've got another m18 light back there some x more m12 batteries a little m12 bluetooth radio and we got the the straight die grinder the 90 degree die grinder and then i put all my most used bits right there and the wrenches ready to rock and then we got some maco burr bits right there so yeah a lot a lot of money in this drawer here cabinet I should say a lot but I use all this stuff all the time um, really like the Milwaukee line of tools because I can get a whole bunch of different stuff and use all the same batteries so oh and I get a lot of questions of where I get my Milwaukee stuff I literally buy everything off the Home Depot app I buy everything off of Home Depot um, they got the best prices and deals in my opinion that I've seen and when I order from the Home Depot app, I kid you not, I get it within a day or two. So it's right now. So really like using the Home Depot app. All right, next compartment. Kind of a mess at the moment. At the bottom, we got the Milwaukee fan, the M12 radio charger. Um, let's get those out. John Deere battery charger, digital, really like it. Works really good. That thing will start a fully dead S680 in 45 minutes. I kid you not, it is impressive. Um, got a battery load tester, old school, but it still works, I like it. Um, got a AC scales, master cool right there for weighing tanks. Here, um, we got some test hoses. This is the service card, John Deere, special tool here. Digital pressure gauge kit. Use that a lot. And here we got a vacuum pump. Some O-rings that fell down. They're not supposed to be up there. O-ring set. Some, I think that's an extra bag of O-rings. Um, in here, So these are, this is the hose for um, where I can snap a pressure gauge onto there 
I can snap that in onto a diagnostic receptacle. So here we got, this is just a bunch of extra O-rings and batteries and stuff in there, not too exciting in that. Um, and here we got a infrared temp gun, master cool, and then a bunch of O-ring kits. This is the hose for the uh, Milwaukee vacuum. Um, here, this this case has a bunch of flat face uh, hydraulic caps, male and female, full set in there. And this is a master flat and boss O-ring kit here. So yeah, that's that compartment. Now this one's a mess. All right, got a bunch of chains, of course. Above there, I keep ratchet straps. Got some pinch clamps, some more ratchet straps, lifting straps, a bunch of different bungees. In here, a whole bunch of different clevises and special lifting straps that I have made over the years. There's all kinds of stuff. This is a, just a bag of extra like P clamps and stuff. More clevises and chains, C clamps, U joint tool, chain hoist, fish tape. Got some uh, three jaw pullers. Uh, this is a bunch of different, this thing is full of plastic caps and plugs and, and stuff for intake pipes and, um, air conditioning lines and, you know, all those little caps that when you get a new line, it comes with a cap, you know, but you save them, you know, that's where they go. Basically some of these, somebody was asking me about these plugs here. There you go works really good for plugging a line that thing is just full of all different kinds of caps and plugs in here this is all wiring them all different sizes in that box there of course you got a fire extinguisher which i have used a couple times um map gas yes it's it's turned off it can't um catch anything on fire in here so got some extra propane tanks an extra map gas bottle this is a mess i have too many clamps on this truck but this whole case is just filled with extra clamps for exhaust coolant pipes coolant hoses all kinds of different clamps in there um, and then in here this is all connectors i mean it's it's to the brim and some extra propane tank in there but uh in there it's it's all the wiring harnesses that i've replaced that had good connectors and i just snipped them off so this thing is literally full of every pigtail you can imagine off a, an engine harness or chassis harness or i got a little bit of everything in there so when i'm working out in the field I always have a connector, usually. And I do carry some new connectors as well in that electrical um, organizer on the other side. But yeah, so that completes the right side of the truck and it's it's dirty, she needs a bath. But like I said, you guys are seeing it in its rare form here. Raw form, I should say. You guys are seeing it in its raw form. So yeah, there she is, F-350. 11 foot readings classic toolbox really like it holds a lot of crap i'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of josh's new toolbox hey look i got a new flag but uh this is just a sneak peek now look at that isn't that sweet we'll get more into that later but look we have all tractors in here now no combines sneak peek at the uh the next project i'm gonna be doing 9510r did an inspection and it's gonna need some work so stay tuned all right well that's gonna complete the repairs and tools series 
you know, I've showed you everything I got. So, um, if you guys got any questions on everything on anything that you've seen, let me know. I'll try to answer this for you guys. Um, let me know what you want to see next. I asked you before, you know, you guys want to see some tool content. You want to see more repairs. What else do you want to see? Give me some ideas and I'll work on it. And until next time, keep that green iron moving.